You're a spy, tasked with infiltrating this embassy, grabbing the secret document, and escaping on a helicopter. But you're not the only spy here. In fact, there could be up to five other spies. Now the good news is that some of these spies are actually also from the same country and are your allies. The trick and what makes the game redacted so cool is that you don't know who are your friends and who are your enemies. You're gonna have to use your guessing skills, your intuition, uh, and some abilities from some of the cool rooms that are laid out in this embassy to find out whose side everybody is on, find the documents, and hightail it out of there before your helicopter gets blown up. Players are split into teams, and each team has a different allegiance. But here's the catch. No one knows whose side anyone else is on. Everyone you meet in the embassy has the potential to be friend or foe, and uncovering which side they belong to is most of the fun in Redacted. This is a game of secrets, maybe more so than just about any other game. When you do exchange cards, it's face down, in secret, leaving others to wonder what was even played. There are several scenarios you can play in Redacted, but the primary scenario requires you to discover the enemy's dossier, call in a helicopter, and get the hell out of there. You can also win if you find a bomb and blow up both enemy helicopters. Let's look at the mission board. There's the basement, the main floor, and the roof level. As you can see, there are symbols for each room, and they are fairly obtuse. Tiny little icons, some with yellow boxes, some with almost impossible to see tape recording symbols. It's a real mess. This is the one major failing of Redacted. But give it a game where you take your time and look up the meaning of every room, and soon enough you'll be able to easily read the board. On your turn, you can move freely, tracking along to any room you can reach and activating that room's action if you arrive undisturbed. Doors with this key symbol are locked and require an item card with a key on it to pass through. No big deal. You can get to pretty much any place without a key, it's just that a key allows you to take shortcuts so you can circumvent other agents. Now I won't run down every room, but I'll give you a couple of notable examples so you get a sense of how Redacted plays. Well, this is an item room. Two of these exist, one in the basement, one on the roof. And here, and you can draw an item card. Crucial, because this is where you find dossiers and bombs, along with some other helpful items. This is the x-ray room. See these doors marked with an X? If you're in the x-ray room and anyone passes through one of these doors, you get to look at all of their item cards. Here's the radio room. Use it to call in the helicopter. And yes, devious spies can totally call in the other team's chopper in order to blow it back to God. This is the security room. If you're in here and anyone uses a computer marked by these tape machines, you have a chance to uncover their loyalty. As I said, you can move pretty freely, except for one thing. If you cross a room with another player, you have to have an interaction. These are the moments that make Redacted thrilling. Each player involved in an interaction picks a card in secret. It could be a neutral card, just strangers passing in the hall, or friendly, which allows you to give the other player an item or even to heal them. Or you can choose one of the three combat cards, which means you are about to throw down. Players exchange cards in secret and react accordingly. Now if they both go neutral, they pass without incident and the active player just keeps going on his way. Combat ends a turn after it's been resolved. Now if one player used a weapon and the other was, say, neutral, tough shit, the neutral player is gonna get stabbed. If they both threw down, then they fight it out with their chosen weapons in a simple rock-paper-scissors battle. The winner of any combat has a few choices. They could injure their opponent, and while injured, that person can only move one room each turn. Disastrous turn of luck. They could steal an item from him, the scoundrel. Or they could interrogate them, which is another way to discern someone's loyalty. Redacted lives and thrives on this sort of secrecy, and that really is all there is to the game. Choosing where to go, figuring out who to trust, and when to call in your helicopter so you can get the hell out of there.
When you first get Redacted out of the box and lay it out, I think it is one of the more daunting games. So there aren't a lot of pieces to it. You know, you don't have a bunch of chits everywhere. The board itself, all of the symbols, this really tiny room card that tells you what everything does, it, it's all a little bit much. And because so much of the game is played in secret, you don't get those kind of checks from other observers on the board going, oh no, that's not how you play this mechanic right. You really gotta know what you're doing before you start playing. That is definitely tough. It is not an easy game, I think, to learn at first. But when you do know it, this game is awesome. I love Redacted. What I absolutely love is just one, it's the elements of when you meet with somebody, right? You have an interaction, you have five possibilities. You could just pass by in the halls and say, hey, nothing going here. Uh, you could give them something. Maybe you have a suspicion that they're on your side. But then even if you decide to do combat, it's still rock, paper, scissors combat. So you have to choose which weapon you're gonna use. And then it's like, what weapon have they used before? You know, you're not certain of, of what's going on. And, and I just think that level of decision making is really cool. And then at the same time, you're, you're still trying to figure out what items does somebody have? Is this guy against me? Does he have a bomb? Like if somebody else calls in your allied helicopter, are they on your side and do they have your friendly dossier or do they have a bomb and they're on the enemy side? You've got to be able to discern this stuff really fast because people are able to move through areas so quickly. If you're looking for something that is more of a mid-level game, it's, it's not too hard and complex, there aren't too many moving pieces, but it's definitely not a simple game, not a beginner's or a casual game. Uh, this is one to really check out, especially if you're like me and you love the spy theme, you love bluffing games, and you love having to do deduction on what people's intentions are and what kind of cards they have. That's redacted for you. It is an absolute blast.